Afloat with Henry Morgan. Afloat with Henry Morgan, written for radio by Warren Barry and a George Edwards production. After Geoffrey Hunter gives Don Pietro misleading information about Henry Morgan, he and Kitty are taken to the slave markets, where they share the same cell as Antoinette de Lacy. After the torture received at Dietz's hands, Geoffrey is crippled, but he has hopes that Hero is free and will aid them. The next morning, Hero goes amongst the curious to see them. And Geoffrey manages to whisper to him that when the sales start and they are taken from their cell, he is to set fire to the market. Hero faithfully carries out his instructions, and in the confusion, Antoinette, Kitty and Geoffrey are left unguarded. Hero joins them, but Geoffrey, being crippled, refuses to go, claiming that he would impede them. But Hero picks him up, and they safely get away from Havana into the hills. But Geoffrey becomes very still and quiet, and Hero tells the two girls that the trials that he's been through has brought upon Geoffrey another attack of the dreaded fever. Sure, I'm a mighty sick man. He's been through more than any man could ever be expected to go through. The fever? Oh, Hero, what shall we do? There's no one we can turn to for aid. We don't want no aid. I cured Master Jeffrey before. I reckon I can do it again. Only thing is, time's running very short. There ain't too much time, Miss Kitty. That's right. We have to meet the British ship at a certain time, don't we? And if we're not there on the shorter meter... She'll sail away without us. That's part of the agreement. But what are we going to do for Jeffrey? I reckon we've just got to push on till we find a nice quiet spot where he can lie hidden. And I can go out and gather herbs like I did before. I'll make a mixture and hope it'll break the fever in time for us to get to the ship. Oh, how still he lies and... Oh, how hot he is. That's the fever, Miss Kitty. We've got to get into a place where we can rest before the delirium starts upon him. Surely this will be the ideal spot, Hero, here by the stream. Under the shelter of these overhanging vines. And all the scrub around will keep us safe from prying and eyes. And the bracken is lying thick. It'll make a bed to lie the poor master's body on. Let me help you, Hero. Lie him down. Oh, gently now. It's gentle. I've been carrying him all the way. Oh, I know. Hero, I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean to speak sharply to you. It's just that I'm, I'm, I'm so anxious. We, we have to see to his every comfort. I reckon that is about as comfortable as we can make him. Now I, I have to leave you. I have to go out into the bush and try and find those herbs. Oh, Lord, Lord, if I don't find them, we'll be in a fine pickle. Have no fear, Hero. I look after him. I want to nurse him until he's well again. I want to give him all the care that I can. Well, I, I go off knowing that he's in good hands. I'll be back just as soon as I can get the herbs. And you two ladies keep a good lookout. Although I, I reckon we're... Nicely hidden here. You can never tell who's prowling about. You can never tell. Oh, Lord, and keep him safe. Oh, what have we done that this affliction should be set upon us? Is there to be no end to our trouble? And a fine one you are to be worrying about yourself. What about poor Jeffrey? Look what he's been through. And to get the fever on top of it all. Don't you realize that it might kill him? I know. It is. It's just that I, I feel so helpless. Well, tear a bit off your dress and dip it in the creek and bring it back so that I can bear this poor hot head. Oh, yes, yes. Of course I'll do that. Oh, Jeffrey, what have they done to you? Why did this have to happen to you? I keep feeling that it's all my fault. If I hadn't been jealous, all this might not have happened. You wouldn't have been taken as a convict and, and I wouldn't have gone away with Dietz. But I'll atone for it, my darling. you see. you see. Here is the wet cloth. Oh, thank you. How flushed he looks. 
and so helpless with his hair tumbling over his face. It seems so wrong that a great strong man should be lying there so ill, with his body so broken. His body will be fine and strong someday. If it's care and attention that will make him well and happy again, it's I who will be seeing that he gets it. And now he, he lies there so helpless, as helpless as a young baby. He'll be fine and strong again, I'm telling you that. I'll see that he not wants for a thing. I'll attend to him well. It will be too much for one woman to nurse him by herself. But together, we will be able to do it. Won't we, Kitty? There'll be no need for that. I can look after him. He's my responsibility. Oh, I see. It may be just as well if we have things made plain between us right now, Antoinette, so as to save any further misunderstandings later on. There will not be any necessity to do that. I think I understand. And I'll make sure that you do by telling you in my own words. Jeffrey's my man. Do you understand that? He's my man. I lost him once and I'm not going to lose him again. Yes. I understand that, Kitty. I know he is yours. The Lord is certainly looking after us well. Look, I, I found the herbs. Glory be, he's going to be all right now. You'll see. I'll go down to the creek and I'll get these ready right away. Oh, glory be. It's a happy man I am that I found these herbs. Oh, I thank you, Lord. here. I am very busy. I have not the time to talk to you. I'll not keep you very long. Where are you hurrying, Sir Delaris? I am sick of Havana. I am going into the country. I am packing. I am leaving here this night. But tell me, what did you want with me, dear? I've only come to hear if there's been any word as to our three friends. Have they had been discovered? So far, no. But all the search parties are not in yet. But what about you? Have you not been out looking for them? Yeah, I've searched for them until I'm nearly dropping from fatigue. I, I can't understand it. How could they possibly get away? Jeffrey Hunter is a cripple. They must carry him. How could two women carry a big man like that and not be observed? Jeffrey Hunter had an accomplice. That is obvious. For all we know, it might be someone who lives in Havana. He might have given them shelter in his house. We do not know. But to get away from the slave market, he must have been carried... How was it that he is not observed? Oh, at the time there was great confusion. Everyone was rushing around in everybody's way, fleeing for their lives. They were not looking for what other people were doing. And once they were away from the slave market, it would not take them long to get right away from the town if they are out of the town. But how could anyone be giving them shelter here in Havana? They, they know nobody. We never know, yes. There just might be someone here in Havana who is in the pay of the English. But all the search parties are not back yet. We might have word any moment now that they have been retaken. Huh. I do not expect they will get very far. When will all the search parties return? Before sundown. I have a right, Dolores, to know how they have progressed. What right? I have joined the past when you're in Jamaica. You'll get word immediately to me, Dolores, when all the search parties return. I cannot do that yet. You see, I am in a hurry to leave Havana. I am sick of the place, and I want to get away into the country. I am leaving tonight. Oh, well, Diaz, I will do this much for you. On my way into the country, I will call at your house and I will tell you. We will have had word from all of the searchers before I leave. I would be very grateful if you do that for me, Dolores. Very well. It shall be done. Huh. What are you looking at, Diaz? I was looking at the Aztec necklace, Dolores. I was thinking how perfectly you wear it. You are frightened now to let it out of your reach, Dolores, aren't you? People look at it and they desire it. They may look at it and they may desire it. But the Aztec, that is all. The Aztec necklace is all mine and it shall stay mine. It has brought so much trouble in the past. I I wonder if its troublesome days are over. I will never let it out of my possession. No, no, of course not. You know, it once was very nearly mine. Captain Morgan gave it to me, not realizing just how beautiful it really was. You know, I was foolish enough to show it to him, and I lost it. I have never for a moment stopped regretting the loss of it, Dolores. So? Then you had better. You know, it's a wonder to me that you're not afraid to wear it. 
I am afraid of nothing or no one. I am the daughter of the governor of Cuba. No one would dare to attempt to take the necklace from me. Are you warning me, Dolores? No. I am just telling you that I am not at all frightened of you, Diaz. Now, will you please go and leave me? I have much to attend to. But I will call at your house on my way out of Havana and will give you the latest news about the escaped slaves. Your carriage draw up, Dolores, so I came to open the door for you. There's no one else in the house. You come in. No. You have news? I cannot wait very long. I am driving myself into the country. I dislike being driven by coachmen. I like to have the control of the horses between my own two hands. But they are very high-spirited horses, and I cannot leave them alone for long. No. There is no news of the three who escaped. Most of the other slaves have been recaptured. But those three have not been taken. That is all the news I have for you, Diaz. Now I must go before my horses get restless. Why are you looking at me like that, Diaz? Dolores, did you tell anyone that you are coming to give me this news tonight? No. Why should I? Then you have come here alone, Dolores? And no one, no one at all knows that you are here. You are driving into the country. You would not be missed for perhaps days, eh? And in that time, I will have left Cuba. I will be sailing on the fleet which is taking me to Spain. I will never come back here to Cuba. Why, what is all this? The Ast When I leave, I am going to take the Aztec necklace with me. And it seems, Dolores, that in taking it, I must first of all kill you. <laughs> The Aztec necklet brings nothing but despair, agony, and pain. Hear what happens to this accursed piece of jewelry in the next episode of Afloat with Henry Morgan. Mm -hmm.